So you mm. could have the intent that you want wealth, you want health, you want success. That's your intent, that's your thought. But if you're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel it, then you're not drawing the experience to you because you're not feeling the emotion, right? So then teaching people once again how to balance their thoughts and feelings because you can, you can enter that cycle either place. Sometimes we do a meditation, we start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. Mm -hmm. Other times, you open your awareness, you create brain coherence, you have the vision of your future, you begin to emotionally experience it. However you wanna jump on that cycle, uh, and then sustain it, because the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing your future to you. So then, most people spend their lives, right? They, we live in this realm called space-time, three-dimensional reality, and you move your body through space in three-dimensional reality, it takes time. Yeah. So everything, all your goals, all your dreams, all your visions, you're gonna have to get your body up and drag it through space every day to pay off that, you know, that home that's in your future, right? right? When you create from the field instead of from matter, when you use a vibrational match between your energy and some potential, and your thoughts and feelings are coherent, now you are going to begin to collapse time and space or the experience is going to be drawn to you. Now, now you're the vortex to your destiny and now you don't have to go anywhere to get it because you're not playing by the rules of three-dimensional reality. You're playing by the rules of energy and the quantum. Mm. So teaching people how to do this and getting better at it, then all of a sudden they're not forcing and controlling outcomes. In fact, they're trusting and surrendering to outcomes because they don't want to get in the way because the moment you start trying to predict when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, you're overlaying a known over a place where there should be an unknown, right? So teaching people how to do that means we have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater mm -hmm. to occur. What if it's possible to make your dreams come true? What if this life is just a game and you can master it? What if one day, at the end of your life, you will regret not being braver? What if one day you'll regret being constantly stressed and anxious? If you are ready to master your life, then this video is for you. Every day, you see the world through your own ideas about what can or cannot happen. Have you ever thought about how you might be limiting yourself? It's like if you only believe in what you already know and refuse to change or grow. But something amazing happens when you start imagining the person you want to become. It's like flicking a switch in your brain. You begin to create new pathways, like little roads that make you more like that person you dream of being. It's like your brain is a map and you're drawing new routes to your goals. Imagine if you could make yourself feel the way you want to feel even before you reach your goals. Like, if you want to feel rich, you could start feeling that way right now. And when you feel powerful, you start moving closer to success. And if you love yourself and your life, you start changing everything around you for the better. This isn't just a big idea. It's because of a special part of your brain called the frontal lobe. It helps you focus and ignore distractions so you can turn your dreams into reality. Imagine yourself right now, reading these words, feeling totally calm and focused. The chair you're sitting on fades away, any discomfort in your shoulders melts away, and the world around you seems unimportant. All you hear is your own inner voice, clear and peaceful. Think of your brain like an orchestra, with the frontal lobe as the conductor. It's in charge of making sure everything works together smoothly. This part of your brain is where your conscious choices come from. It's like the control center of your true self. The frontal lobe helps us rise above our instincts and emotions. It lets us make decisions based on reason, not just feelings. Without it, we'd be controlled by outside influences and our past experiences, stuck in survival mode. But when we use our frontal lobe to make intentional choices, we break free from that cycle. We become the ones in control, not just reacting to what happens around us. This ability to think beyond our emotions is what sets us apart as humans. 
Imagine when your body slows down and you start feeling really relaxed. It's like time stretches out and moments feel longer. This happens especially when you're in that half-asleep, half-awake state. You can actually learn to control this feeling. And when you do, it helps your body find its balance again, calming down stress and making you feel amazing, full of energy, happiness, and clear thinking. It's like your brain starts working in sync, all the different parts coming together perfectly. You feel whole, like you found yourself. So you have the power to shape your future by tapping into your brain and consciousness. It starts with a simple act, just closing your eyes and imagining the person you want to become. I truly believe that who you are shapes your reality. But here's the catch. Most of our thoughts are just repeats of what we thought yesterday. That means we're stuck in the same patterns, making the same choices, and feeling the same way over and over again. It's like we're trapped in a never-ending story. But the good news is, we can change that. By breaking free from those old thought patterns, we can rewrite our story. It's all about rewiring our brains to think differently, so we can become the people we want to be. Surprisingly, by the time we're halfway through life, most of who we are, about 95%, is made up of stuff we do without even thinking. It's like we're on autopilot, doing the same things and feeling the same way over and over again. These habits and feelings become so normal that we hardly even notice them anymore. But sometimes, it takes a big wake-up call, a crisis, a tough time, or hitting rock bottom to make us realize we need to change. In those vulnerable moments, we step back and really look at ourselves. We see past the surface and start paying attention to our thoughts, actions, and feelings. That's where meditation comes in. It's all about getting to know yourself better. When we become more aware of our thoughts and feelings, we can start to change them. It's like turning on a light in a dark room. We see things we never noticed before. And it's important to remember that this isn't a sign of failure. It's actually a sign of progress. Facing those hidden thoughts and feelings is the first step to making real change. But it takes a lot of effort and focus to break free from old habits and ways of thinking. Instead of just reacting to what happens around us, we can choose how we want to think and feel, using our environment to help us grow. Meditation gives us a break from our everyday surroundings. It's like pressing pause on our senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. We take a moment to set aside our body's usual reactions and explore something new. It's like stepping into uncharted territory within ourselves. One thing that makes humans special is our free will. We can make choices based on what we truly want. And our frontal lobe, a part of our brain, plays a big role in this. It helps us make conscious choices that aren't just dictated by our past experiences. When we rely too much on our memories to make decisions, we're not using our frontal lobe to its full potential. But when we face choices that go beyond what we already know, our frontal lobe really shines. It's like it wakes up and starts working at its best. That's when we're truly making choices based on what we want, not just what we remember. Research has shown us some fascinating things about the frontal lobe the part of our brain involved in making choices. It turns out that the frontal lobe really stands out when we're faced with decisions that aren't black and white. Instead of clear right or wrong answers, we're dealing with situations where personal preference and enjoyment come into play. Dr. Elkanon Goldberg, a respected professor, conducted some cool experiments to explore this. In one, People were shown symbols and asked to pick which picture they preferred, with no right or wrong answers. He tested two groups, one with no brain issues and another with various brain injuries. The results were eye-opening. People with damage to their frontal lobes struggled to make choices based on their preferences, while others did just fine. In another test, Participants with frontal lobe damage were asked to choose responses similar or different from a target. 
Interestingly, when the choices were clear-cut, everyone did equally well, whether their frontal lobes were damaged or not. These experiments teach us two important things. Firstly, the frontal lobe really kicks in when we're making decisions in tricky situations with many possible outcomes. And secondly, when decisions are simple, the frontal lobe isn't as crucial. It appears that when we're making decisions based on whether something is right or wrong, our brain doesn't need to work as hard. This study showed that when we rely on what we already know and the patterns in our brain, we're not really using our free will. Even though we might think we're freely choosing, we're actually just following the same old paths in our brain. Think about how often we make simple decisions in our daily lives, like choosing between two options, picking a side, or deciding if something is good or bad. Are these choices making us act like our frontal lobes aren't working properly? It seems like when we're faced with familiar situations, our brain automatically goes to the patterns it knows best, and we end up acting without really thinking. This is where things like advertising come into play. Companies use it to get us to remember their products. So when we need something, we automatically reach for what's familiar. But true free will means stepping out of those familiar patterns and considering new possibilities. It takes effort to break out of those old habits wired into our brains. When our frontal lobe isn't fully engaged, we're just reacting based on what we already know without truly making a choice. So often we end up choosing what's familiar instead of exploring new ideas that our frontal lobe can offer us. Taking the easy route, the one we already know, might not need much brain power from our frontal lobe. But how often are we really making choices freely? And how often are we just following habits we've formed? When we stick to what's comfortable and known, our brain's frontal lobe doesn't get much action and neither do we. But when we step out of our comfort zones and face uncertain choices, that's when our frontal lobe wakes up and starts working. It's like our brain's way of saying, hey, let's think about this. So next time you're making a decision, think about the power of your frontal lobe. Challenge yourself to consider new ideas beyond what you're used to. That's when real free will kicks in and you open yourself up to endless possibilities for change and growth. Your choices have the power to shape your future, and your frontal lobe is your secret weapon for a brighter tomorrow. Can you teach your body to understand how your future will feel before it happens? Usually, people need something exciting or thrilling to get their attention or to learn something new. This makes them depend on outside things to control how they feel. But here's a different idea. Instead of waiting for something to happen, go inside yourself and feel grateful for it beforehand. You might think, but I can't feel it yet because it hasn't happened. That's just the old way of thinking. If you can make your heart and mind work together smoothly, you can imagine your future self and feel those emotions right now. Feeling thankful before you're healed can start the healing process. Feeling abundant or deserving before you're wealthy can actually attract wealth and loving yourself and life can bring love from others. It's like a natural law. If you wait for things to change outside of you before you feel better, you'll be stuck in a loop. Some people get stuck because they don't make changes themselves. Saying, when this happens, then I'll be happy, is a common mistake. Instead, try feeling the emotion before the experience. When your heart and mind are in sync, they create a powerful magnetic field that can affect the world around you, kind of like a Wi-Fi signal. With a focused mind, you can send your thoughts out through this field. Emotions usually come after an experience, right? Well, the science of epigenetics tells us that emotions can actually change our biology before we have the experience. So, if you feel something strongly before it happens, you're actually changing yourself at a deep level. Even people who are new to meditation can see changes in their bodies after just a week of practice. They start to see things differently. Breaking old habits involves paying attention to your thoughts and reactions. 
You learn to be still and observe how your surroundings affect you. And how do you do all this? It's simple, meditation. Forget any preconceived notions you have about it. The goal is to access your subconscious and change it while staying fully aware of yourself. When you take charge of your thoughts, beliefs, actions, and feelings, instead of letting them run on autopilot, you break free from your old self and become a new version of yourself. That's what we teach people to do. It might feel tough at first, but with practice, you'll get the hang of it. The trick is to focus on your heart. Where you put your attention, your energy follows. The heart can release chemicals that help your body heal and grow. Keep at it, and it's like your heart starts to blossom. When you feel love, your heart reacts physically. It opens up, pumping blood and oxygen. You feel a love so deep, words can't describe it. It's like taking a beautiful journey into your own heart. In Tibetan, meditation means getting to know yourself. So I use the term meditation to mean watching and improving yourself. To really understand something, you need to spend time observing and learning. The key to making any change is moving from just doing something to doing it while also watching yourself. Picture athletes or performers like golfers, skiers, or singers. When they want to get better, they watch videos of themselves to see what they're doing well and what needs fixing. You can't change something about yourself if you don't see what your old and new ways look like. So it's crucial to let go of old habits and become familiar with both your old and new selves. You have to pay close attention and catch any automatic thoughts, emotions, or actions. Your brain's frontal lobe helps you do this. You can observe yourself and decide what you need to change to make your life better. The first step is choosing to leave behind the old you and make room for a new version with fresh thoughts, actions, and behaviors. For instance, if you want to be happy, you have to stop dwelling on negative thoughts and feeling down. If you want to be rich, you need to stop doing things that keep you broke. And if you want to be healthy, you've got to ditch unhealthy habits. To achieve this, you need to block out distractions from the outside world, calm your mind, and forget about time. This way, you can focus on your thoughts and feelings. When you pay attention to your unconscious thoughts and bring them into awareness, you're meditating. Getting to know yourself is a kind of meditation. When you look at your old self from a distance, you gain more control over it. Once you're aware of it, you can start to break away from those old habits and change them. By consciously stopping your old ways of thinking and acting, your brain rewires itself and you send different signals to your genes. That's how you stop being your old self. We've seen this happen with new meditators. In just a week, their bodies change a lot. These changes come from inside them, not from anything outside. Your thoughts and feelings can really change your body chemistry and affect your life. Your aim is to become a new version of yourself, a new way of being. Now think about this. If you become a new person, you're essentially becoming someone else, right? The way you used to think, feel, and act shape the life you have now. Simply put, who you are as a person shapes your own reality. And remember, your reality is based on how you think, feel, and act. By changing each of these things in a new way, you're not only creating a new version of yourself, but also a completely different reality. Your new personality should naturally lead to a different life. Imagine if someone named John suddenly decided to be called Steve and started thinking, acting, and feeling like Steve instead of John. That would definitely lead to a different life. Here's another example. Once, while I was speaking in California, a woman came up to me upset asking, why am I not living in Santa Fe? I calmly replied, because the person who just spoke to me lives in Los Angeles. The person who would live and is already living in Santa Fe is completely different from who you are right now. From a quantum perspective, this new personality is the perfect starting point for creating something new. 
This fresh identity isn't tied to old situations that keep bringing the same circumstances into your life. So, it's the ideal place to imagine a new destiny. We hold the power to decide who we are moment by moment. If we wish to transform our lives, we must first transform ourselves. It's crucial to be mindful of our thoughts, actions, and emotions. If we find ourselves slipping into old habits, we can correct course. Ultimately, it's about evolving into a new version of ourselves, someone who matches the vision of our desired future. This means rewiring our thoughts and emotions. Rather than dwelling on what hasn't happened yet, we should strive to feel as if our desired future is already a reality. When we can consistently generate this feeling, we're on the path to mastering our lives. This process is open to anyone, regardless of their beliefs or background. Our ego can serve us well when it's balanced. It helps us make sensible decisions like stepping away from a dangerous fire or cliff. However, stress hormones can sometimes send our ego into overdrive, leading to self-centeredness, selfishness, and anxiety. This can disconnect us from others and harm our health. Stress can even make us physically unwell. So can we trade fear, anger, and stress for positive emotions? Can we learn to manage our emotions and maintain a healthy state of being? In a good state, we're less selfish and more considerate of others. We feel connected to the world, like part of a community. This is the future we should strive for. To reach this future, we must learn to regulate ourselves and remain in a positive state, especially during tough times. It's like training an animal to behave well. We need to transcend our body's automatic reactions and habits. By doing so, we release energy and become more present, less consumed by negative thoughts. We diminish our ego and become less self-centered. In turn, we inspire others to do the same, fostering positive change in the world. Thus, the key to changing the world lies in working on ourselves, striving to be better, and consistently showing up as our best selves, even amidst adversity. Having tools to navigate life's challenges is invaluable in this pursuit. 